I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer or reflection as we remember all those who have passed in our community over the, over the uh, past week and also as, remem as we remember the uh, veterans and servicemen and women who, are, who continue to defend our freedom and our way of life around the globe. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Lascom? Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Dispense with the meeting of, or the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, Tax Assessor's Report Hearing Date held October 2nd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Audit status from Robert Rossi and Company received October 17, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation received September 16, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held September 25, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Are there any clerk's notes? Yes, uh, there is, Mr. Okay. Joyce. Uh, um, Mrs. Evans requested I attend the meeting held October 23rd at Johnson College concerning the major flooding issues in the area of the school. Yes. And she asked me to relay to council what was discussed. Yes, please do. Neighbors reported serious flooding conditions, property and road damage, and an exposed gas line on North Main Avenue due to erosion caused by the flooding. John Posha's city engineer and Mark Dewar, DPW director, made recommendations to install a drainage system that would alleviate the flooding. And Mr. Dewar alerted the gas company immediately following the meeting of the exposed gas line. The repair work would be done completely in-house through the joint efforts of the city and sewer authority. However, before the work begins, an engineer's report must be done. This would tell workers where utilities are located, elevations in the area, and other vital information. In light of the significant potential for the development of additional hazardous conditions, Mrs. Evans is asking the council send a letter to the appropriate parties directing an engineer's report be addressed immediately. Yes, I, I agree with that if my colleagues do as well. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mrs. Craig, if you could please send that letter, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And one more <coughs> uh, quick remark. Today, I attended the assessment appeal hearings um, mm -hmm. that were spoken about at council uh, several weeks in a row. Yes. And I'll have a report for council next week on those hearings. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. You're welcome. Are there any council members that have announcements? Yes, I would. I have a few announcements to make on the first okay. one, and I want to mention this now just so the public has a chance if they have questions or comments. Um, tonight on the agenda, we are going to have the final reading of the uh, community development block grant funding for next year. Um, and the few changes that will be made in the amendment proposed tonight are as follows. Um, OECD administration will be reduced by $60,000. EOTC sidewalk lighting will be increased by $15,000 and $45,000 will be allocated for the Pinebrook neighborhood pool. Um, this item was currently, um, it was unfunded when it was sent to city council. And then on the public service side, the, the three changes are the UNC project summer camp will be reduced from $39,000 to $27,000. The Northeast suicide prevention will be increased from $9,000 to $11,000. And of all of the applicants, um, this group was the only group that was a first time applicant and they will be receiving the maximum uh, funding for what they applied for. 
And finally, an increase um, from zero to ten thousand dollars for dress for dress for success. Thank you, Councilman Rogan. And a oh, uh, you said you're out of <laughs> that's fears. okay. So go ahead. And, a, and a couple of other announcements that I had. Um, the Dante Literary Society will be having their dinner on October 26th at 1916 Prospect from 4.30 to 7 o'clock. The dinners are $11 and takeouts are available. Um, the South Scranton Neighborhood Watch is having a free um, Safe Halloween event at Connors Park at 500 Orchard Street and that's on Sunday, October 27th from 3 to 6 p.m. And finally, um, this is another one that I announced last week as well. Um, the volunteers of Catholic Social Services, St. Francis Kitchen, and the Scranton chapter of Unico, along with the La Festa Italiana Lackawanna County Committee, are having a night of entertainment to raise funds for the construction of St. Francis Commons, which is to house, um, help homeless veterans. And this event is $35 per person and it's from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. at Janetti Manor in Dixon City. And all the funds raised will be going towards the homeless veterans. And that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rogan. Uh, Mr. McGough, do you have any announcements? I'd just uh, like to make a motion to uh, appoint uh, Mr. Rogan as temporary chair for public safety. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. Anyone on the question? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Councilwoman Evans and Councilman Loscom will not be in attendance at tonight's meeting as they are both ill. Mrs. Grayton? Mm -hmm. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Phyllis B. Humphrey. Um, I want to say hello and, and I really miss everybody. I'm a, a victim of home trafficking since I'm 16, uh, but I'm a peacemaker no matter, I failed twice <laughs> in the city of Scranton. Uh, things have to be addressed over across by St. Anthony's. I fell and was thrown out on the road and about six weeks ago, uh, when I went to judge to get a PFA, he denied me. And because I had surgery, uh, what has happened, I'm going to let that go. I'm just going to say this. Okay. USA, Israel, Jordan, Iran, Turkey, Syria, Arab, Republic, Egypt, Pakistan, Holy See, the United States. Uh, President Obama, I know you know me. I want to talk to thank Homeland Security the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and our police uh, that helped me through my post-trauma and the ambulance. We got a couple guys we got to straighten out. Uh, everybody asked me to run for mayor, a lot of people. And uh, I'm 65. But Mr. Joyce, um, yes. I know that, that there is somebody here uh, <laughs> that is going to do good. Our servicemen, uh, the places I went that I was ran out of due to conspiracy because I exposed Mr. Joyce the truth of the slumlords. I got a lot of documents that I need to get here and documents that got to go for all of the uh, churches that have been destroyed whether it's Muslim uh, synagogue or a Catholic church or a Russian church. I've been saving all the relics, pictures and all, and the load is getting heavy. The load is getting heavy. Uh, these countries and 79 countries I baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Nobody knows about me, they assume they assume. Uh, I have a certificate here. It's Phyllis Humphrey, the flight of 93, the National Memorial. 
a common field one day, a field of honor forever. To recognize your generosity and support of building the Flight 93 National Memorial, the Certificate of Appreciation hereby certified that Phyllis B. Humphrey is a founding sponsor of the Flight 93. I and the City of Scranton, in a special way, try to intervene for the protection of our country. But something happened because of a misdiagnose. I don't have no police records. I was misdiagnosed, and I'm gifted. I want to share these gifts with the city of Scranton, and I want to help them to do the best to their ability in the city of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm going to step up. I'm going to give you this. Okay. I have these pictures here. We have real bows. We have bows. We have a Christmas tree that I've been trying to get. Everything's in storage. I am considered homeless, homeless because of my faith. Uh, tonight, thank God for St. Anthony's. But Mr. Sherman has abused our service here. Uh, this bit, there's a disc in here. There's a disc. It has everything that's not imagination or cuckoo. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be spoken that God is love and love is God. And we've got to do something for our veterans. They shouldn't be in bug infested places that I even went up and cried to the UN. Now, these pictures right here are what's on here. I, I want these back with this, the disc. I'm keeping this because I'm still working for international peace. And I want everybody to know, this is how the devil works. He doesn't take one, he takes a bunch down. I want to see that abortion is abolished. Uh, it's imperative because in the Muslim religion, Mohammed abolished abortion, but it's a shame what these people are doing. Uh, if I could be of any assistance to any of you, and we could sit down humanly and talk and come and get me, I'd really appreciate it. Because we've got to make this a better place and not have mirrors not doing what they're doing. Because of the debit, I called here and nobody seemed to do anything until yesterday when I called the water company. Over there, there's a wrong water thing. We gotta do something because somebody else is gonna get hurt. And you see what happened here. But I'm strong, I'm a girl. Remember that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. George. Thank you very much, Phyllis. Okay. Our next speaker tonight is Doug Miller. He should be the next mayor. <laughs> Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Just like to uh, begin this evening and uh, address uh, 7B, the uh, OECD funding on the agenda. Um, I couldn't really hear too well in the back, but I believe, Mr. Rogan, you said Pinebrook was going to get some funding for next year? Yes. Okay. What, what was that figure? I, I apologize. I, I didn't hear that back there. $45,000. $45,000? Okay. You know, as we all know, I mean, that's, that's obviously uh, something that's a long time coming um, when we look at a lot of the neighborhood pools that, unfortunately, the last uh, few years have been shut down due to a lack of funding, and, and certainly uh, this will go a long way. Uh, in an area that uh, has suffered an awful lot, and I'm pleased to see that finally the city is uh, able to step up and offer some assistance uh, with this particular neighborhood pool, and hopefully um, Novembrino Pool and Connell Park and a lot of the other neighborhood pools can also uh, reopen next summer. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, uh, the headline this morning uh, in regards to the pension board and uh, a recommendation made by a member to uh, reach out to nonprofits um, and try to seek some sort of uh, some sort of payment in, in lieu of taxes to assist with the pension uh, shortfall. 
As we know, I believe we're looking at this year about a $5 million shortfall for 2013. Um, if I'm incorrect on that statement, I'm, I'm sure somebody can, can correct me. Um, you know, I, it, I couldn't help but kind of go back to uh, the suggestion I had made a few weeks ago uh, in regards to the tuition tax, and, and I know it's, it's met with some mixed emotions, mixed, mixed feelings. Um, but, you know, as I, I did throughout my research, uh, determine that the city does have the ability to generate, uh, you know, in the excess of millions of dollars, you know, perhaps more than the six million that I did, uh, you know, pr uh, present to, to the council at that time. Um, you know, when you look at the shortfall, we have uh, a tuition tax, quite frankly, uh, come up with that funding needed. But, you know, I, I, I do want to go back to a speaker who last week, uh, you know, took some time to address some issues and, and, and took the time to, uh, you know, disagree with my suggestion uh, and, and, you know, in words found it's uh, somewhat ri ridiculous to, to quote him. And, you know, I, I couldn't help but think to myself that, as I've said many times repetitively from the podium, when you're a city that's near bankruptcy, uh, you know, near, you know, following the path of Detroit, uh, I don't think any idea brought forward by, you know, a resident of the community or an individual council member uh, should be deemed ridiculous. Um, I think it's ridiculous to make that statement. Uh, this same individual offered some solutions, and I, I commend him for that, taking the time to step up and offer some, some suggestions to council. But to, uh, you know, classify my suggestion as ridiculous, I, I think is absurd. Um, you know, I took the time to do some research. Uh, I reached out to, you know, individuals in Pittsburgh, and I believe this is a plan that should be implemented. Um, we have the ability to bring in millions and millions of dollars. Um, we've been told that it's, it's a punishment, that we're punishing the students. Um, you know, th those, those sort of statements kind of irk me because I don't think I could have been any more clear um, throughout this whole process of, of myself, you know, raising this issue. This isn't meant to be a punishment. And, and I, I sort of get frustrated in having to constantly be repetitive in, in that nature because this isn't about punishment. It's about paying your fair share. If we want to talk about punishment, we all have to pay taxes. We all have to pay, pay fees. It's not just in Scranton. It's all across America. We all pay taxes. Is that a punishment? No, it's our obligation. We pay taxes and fees for services that our government provides us. And that's simply what we're asking our students to do here in the city. You know, we've been told that they're in, they've been in diapers since the city became distressed. Mr. Dobson brought up a good point a few weeks ago. These same individuals that were in diapers can vote in this community. And they're going to vote two weeks from now in a historic election in the city to determine who runs the city for the next four years. They're going to vote in that election. And so simply asking them to contribute an additional 1% out of their tuition, um, I, I, I think is totally fair when you look at the services that we provide. And again, I do not feel that 1% on the overall tuition is going to make or break the decision factor on whether or not a, a parent sends their child to an institution with our community. I, I just totally find that hard to believe. I do not think that, on an average, an additional two or three hundred dollars is going to deter a potential student from coming to this community. I just, I do not buy that. Um, we, we are a city that, uh, you know, is in need of, of help, financial help. And we need to be creative, as I've said, and brainstorm innovative ways. And that's why I brought this suggestion forward. And I, I still understand that there's some legality questions, and, and I don't think we should continue to sit on this. I think we need to stand up and find out if this is legal. I came forward, I presented the, uh, the information, and now I think it's, it's our job to determine whether or not this is legal. Because if it's legal, I feel it should be implemented in this budget. You know, we're looking at a $20 million deficit in the budget. Pell's made numerous uh, unrealistic expectations of the city. Um, we're talking about tax increases in the amounts of up to 117 percent suggested by Pell, um, increase in garbage fees, you know, just a lot of burdens that the residents of this city can't, can't take at this point. And I know you have a lot of difficult decisions to make in the next, uh, you know, next, next few weeks here uh, as we get into budget season. But, you know, we have to take all suggestions seriously and not be quick to judge them. You know, that's why we, we come forward and we offer suggestions. They're to be considered. And this is a money-making opportunity. It's not a punishment. This is about paying your fair share. And uh, I just hope that we continue to look into it. I understand it's been brought to Pell's attention, but I know there's legality questions. It's not easy to determine whether or not it's legal or not legal. It's something that we need to do research on and get this into play because we need, we need funding here 
uh, and we need to be creative and innovative to move the city forward. Thank you. Thank you. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Um, the first thing I have here today is, um, you know, we're looking for some place to host the Bob Bolas Christmas dinner this year because um, where we generally have at St. Lucie's, they're doing renovations there. So I've been out and about looking for an alternate site. And in discussions with uh, organizations and um, such to bring about this dinner, um, had a lot of discussions with a lot of different individuals. Um, and this goes back to somewhat of some of the comments of Mr. Miller here a little couple moments ago because um, some of these people are religious and they perform weddings. The vast majority of people, they, the families that come here for weddings are former Scrantonians. They've left the city. Um, they come here for weddings, I guess, and, and, and other events because they're still tied to some of our churches. But the bleed of the middle class from this city from overtaxation is overwhelming. And when we start talking about taxing young adults in this city, um, I guess you could make an argument they could vote. But I think we have to realize that for over 20-some years, the residents of the city had an obligation to vote. <clears throat> now, you know, in my own opinion, the union heads took this city to where it is now because they've controlled who was in the mayor's office. They had a lot of say on who was in a lot of various other offices throughout the city. But the one question I have as we proceed down this road is, if they were representing their members in their union, the question I have is, why didn't they make sure that the pension funds were fully funded, considering all the sway they had over all the candidates over all these years that ran for public office? So, in my opinion, evidently, they weren't very concerned with the rank and file because they were more interested in, in climbing to the top and getting, po getting posts in certain positions for certain individuals, as I'm sure is taking right place right now in regards to the two mayoral candidates at this time who, um, because I, I attended the debates at the University of Scranton, and I have to be very honest with you. Halfway through the debate, I left because I can't sit there and listen to people running for public office who are talking about no tax increases. You know, I, I had, would have hoped that the League of Women Voters would have asked a lot more relevant questions. But more can the candidates were more interested in fighting with each other over insignificant things that had no value to the city. But when it, when it came to talking about taxation and raising revenue, they had nothing to say. They had no vision for the city, either candidate. And, you know, it, it's just, we're going to go after, allegedly, we're going to discuss new forms of taxation. And where the city finds itself at this point, it's not possible for the city to raise the revenue it needs inside the city. It's just not going to happen. I don't care who the mayor is. I don't care who the council is. And, you know, Mr. Rogan, it's not a cheap shot at you either to think that you should fi be finance chair because your success is going to be no different than anybody else's. The only reason I think you're a good fit for that is because You've got four more years at council, and you're a young individual that has a chance that if you can come up with a good plan, that maybe someday you'll climb to a higher office. And I think that that's the kind of people we need to elect, is the people that are willing to bathe themselves in the problems of the community and try to come up with ideas. I think, Mr. Joyce, to be honest with you, you know, you did the best you could do. But what can you do with a city that's been in distress for over 20 years and the Commonwealth stands on the sidelines? I remember when they came and sanctioned Mr. Connors, and I just can't understand for the life of me why something wasn't done as this city slid backwards. We put $25 million down one side of Lackawanna Avenue and the mall's ready to collapse. No planning, no vision, no nothing, because it was fast, easy money from Harrisburg, and now the pension plan's $100 million down, and we're listening to utter silliness. The money isn't here for that. And the union leaders had an obligation to protect the rank and file. And they didn't do that either. And not to blame them only, 
but even the residents haven't done anything in over 20 years. And now we're going to go to college students to raise revenue? It just doesn't make any sense. I think that, to be quite honest with you, when the state representative sat here and State Senator Blake sat here, they should have came up with answers, and they should have went to their prospective legislatures and demanded changes in the legislature to help this city turn itself around, and not only this city, but other cities. But politically, it's very dangerous because they don't want to offend other people in the legislature. But you know what? Maybe it's time to start offending people because my generation, we're going to lose our Social Security and all the pensions are underfunded. It's a nightmare. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is Bill Jackwitz. Good, e <coughs> Good evening, uh, Scranton City Council. Good evening. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, 7,958 days ago, Scranton was declared a distressed city under Act 47. The city of Scranton is a total mess financially. The infrastructure, such as roads, bridges, parks, buildings, swimming pools, city-owned vehicles are in need of repair. Unfortunately, the city government is broke and has been broke for some time and will remain broke for decades to come. The following ideas have been tried and have failed in the past 22 years. Raising taxes, advertising on city-owned property, borrowing more money, taxing commuters, going into court, only to lose, costing the taxpayers more money. Now we will try to tax students, uh, name-calling of the nonprofits. Now the city wants the nonprofits to bail the retirement and health care system out, plus make, make donations in lieu of taxes. When will the so-called leaders step up to the plate and admit that they are responsible along with the voters of Scranton for the mess we call Scranton City Government. After attending the mayoral debate on Tuesday evening, I walked away with the understanding that neither candidate, Courtright or Mulligan, understands the seriousness of the financial problems facing the taxpayers of Scranton. Neither candidate have an answer or plan and are not willing to make cuts in the dysfunctional Scranton City Government. First and foremost, the $1.3 million payroll must be cut immediately, along with the lucrative retirement and medical benefits enjoyed by city employees and retirees, past city employees. A good start would be to reduce the mayor's salary back to $50,000 a year and reduce the city council salary to $8,000 a year. Let's show some leadership and, and start at the top. City employees need to be furloughed and departments must be reduced in size along with salaries. I am not saying this to hurt people, but this is what needs to be done. The city is broke. We can't afford 1.3 million every two weeks in salaries and entitlements. It's as simple as that. Scranton is a distressed city within the state of Pennsylvania and should live within their means. I personally have taken an annual pay cut, been furloughed, and have not had a pay raise or cost of living raise in four years. We have been told, do more with less. I'm saying the same thing to Scranton. Do more with less. City elected officials and appointed officials need to take a close look at the demographics of Scranton. Currently, 33% of the residents live in poverty. 22% age 60 and over, 25.3% age 40 to 60 years old, 28.1% age 20 to 40 years old, 24.7% under age 5 to age 20. This information was, was obtained from the 2010 U.S. Census report. Owner-occupied housing units in Scranton, 51.3%, 15,419 units. Renters occupied housing units, 48.7%, 14,650 units. Rental vacancy rate, 8.3%. Homeowners vacancy rate, 2.6%. Occupied housing rate, 88.8%, 30,069 homes. Vacant housing units, 3,784, 11.2%. Houses for sale, 418 homes. 1.2%. As you can see from the official census report, Scranton has a major problem, that being too many rental units, aging population, too many vacant housing units, 
On average, 13% of the property owners do not pay their property taxes on time or at all. These are normally out-of-town homeowners who have no intentions of ever returning back to Scranton, or for that matter, paying their taxes. 13% delinquent on property taxes. 11.2 vacant houses. Do the math. Figure it out. What's the solution? Reduction in expenditures, increased collected revenues, such as taxes, garbage fees, rental fees, permit fees. No free ride for the politically connected or city employees or elected officials. Enforce the laws that are currently on the books. Reduce salaries and place a freeze on all overtime, bonuses, promotions, and do more with less. How do you bring business to Scranton when you have an insane city government? High taxes, crumbling infrastructure, more debt than revenue, Democrats who are Republicans, Republicans who are Democrats, and no solution on how to get the city of Scranton out of distressed city status. Sounds to me Scranton will remain distressed for another 7,958 days, unless miracles on Lackawanna Avenue and Steamtown Mall happens. Most business owners and job producers will never move to Scranton. Why? High taxes, dysfunctional government, poor infrastructure such as roads, closed bridges, controlled political atmosphere, dirty city with an overabundance of vacant property and torn down buildings within the neighborhoods, varmints and animals running loose in every neighborhood on a daily basis. Take a ride through the city, especially in the early, early morning hours. Tell me you don't see varmints and animals all over the city. Thank you. That concludes our sign-in sheet for tonight. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Good evening, council. Dave Dobson. Good evening. President of Scranton. And uh, tonight I'd like to rant about uh, the state, first of all. And um, if you read the state constitution, it gives you the right on a nonprofit to support whatever nonprofit you want, be it a church or whatever. And, uh, but it does not require you to support that nonprofit. Okay? So, in my opinion, at 33% tax exemptions, the people of Scranton are being required to support these, whether they. Uh, basically believe in them or not. And the answer is with the state, and it's almost to a point where I'd love to see a class action suit go right to the Supreme Court on how much the state can require us to just sit here and accept one tax increase after another and go on and on and on. Um, I'd also like to see, even if it's a non-binding resolution from council someday before January 1st, that we uh, request that they kindly plan to locate somewhere else in the future. Re uh, basically, I regard the current nonprofit level as water over the dam, it's, unless we did go to the Supreme Court because I feel that our constitutional rights are being violated. Now, last week, uh, trash fees were a big issue, and I think they should still be a big issue because $7 million is atrocious in back fees. When I first moved to Scranton, I had, uh, uh, it took me three or four years just to get a mailing of my trash bill and I did report it several times, and one was missed, and I feel that NC, Northeast Credit Collections or Northeast Criminal Conspiracy, whatever that stood for, uh, actually passed over. I was standing there right at the computer, paying the back tax bill. I bought a lot next to my house, and uh, he had me right on the computer there, and he treated it like a rollover investment. Uh, he did not notify me that this had been uh, so currently uh, Northeast Credit Collections isn't uh, but obvious uh, uh, 
under city uh, contract, but obviously this is how some of this happened. And it, it's a rotten shame with how much they charged uh, extra for uh, delinquent fees and so forth uh, that they didn't uh, put a better effort into uh, collecting some more money. And there is some discussion on bags, and I don't, don't mean to harp, but I have a question for people that think they're not costing the city a lot of money. And that's, what did we cost over our lives? How many kids did you have going through school? Currently, it costs 120 grand from K through 12 on a national average. And how much taxes do, do you really soak up? In other words, uh, if you're a, a basic level uh, middle class person, with uh, two kids in school, you might never pay enough property tax or trash fees or whatever to justify uh, getting a tax break, even through the whole length of your life. So uh, it's time we start to look inward and ask, you know, what did we do for our country or what our country could do for you to steal a, a quote from uh, JFK, and that's exactly what he meant. I mean, people are costing way more than what they're aware of, and I dealt in service for 30 years or so uh, as an automotive mechanic, and uh, believe me, when you provided the service and they're at the counter, the mistakes get made in the, uh, the uh, debtor's favor. Uh, more often than not. Well, wh why am I getting charged for this? Why am I getting charged for that? Is it under warranty? Is it this or that? And they, you know, they, they, it's obvious they don't want to pay for the service after it's been performed. And uh, on vacant lots, I have a vacant lot adjacent to my house and I appreciate it, but it's awful, uh, awful expensive. So. In other words, if we're going to sell vacant lots for a token amount and charge token taxes to newcomers, then how about consideration there for uh, some of the old timers? Because I have a vacant lot that's just about half of what uh, a whole house would cost. Uh, and uh, on 7A, the towers, uh, I, uh, I support that and I might want to uh, I'd like to note that, uh, I'll try and make it fast here, that they tow a lot of scrap cars and so forth and they pay cash for them. So in, on several occasions when I no longer had a car that I was using, I got a hundred bucks, 120 bucks for it. And when I'm done with the car, it is done. <laughs> but uh, the point being, it's not hanging around the neighborhood being a rat's nest and creating blight. But I'm very concerned with uh, trash. I want to see that trash is taken out. And uh, I'll discuss a little more of it next week because I had Jack Lusk on go to a house. And it hasn't improved over three years. You know, the poor guy's with cancer and a heart condition cleaning up behind this lady that just throws her bag. And OK, I'll make it quick. Finally, in Texas, they came up with the new voter law. If a woman is married, her maiden name becomes her middle name. If not, like my wife is Maida C, and it would have been Maida Radeski Dobson, uh, she may not vote, or she might be required to uh, uh, cast a provisional ballot. And so they get the golden parrot this week. Don't forget, bok, bok, bok. And, Personally, I think some of those type of laws on voting are getting to a point with criminal. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Good evening, council. Uh, Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Um, Good I'd, evening. Like to, I'd like to start this week by going back to last week. Um, there were so many accolades on the, the trash fee collection uh, last week that I think was somewhat unfair. I think you all had an obligation, first of all, to uh, 
know what was going on down there and not have so many delinquencies. But second of all, there are a lot of people whose names appeared on that list who did not owe a penny. I have several relatives. They were mortified to find their names on that list. It took them three trips to City Hall to get it resolved. Uh, the first time to come in and, and say, because it, they dealt with uh, rental properties, that they had come in and file the required vacancy documentation, and at which time there's no fee. And then when the apartments were rented, they came back and reinstated it, paid what was due. And because the city could not come up with the paperwork, um, they said, oh, you know, gets misplaced and, and stuff. It was just back in their lap, and they were told what they could do to, uh, to get the situation rectified. But it took, and, and I might add, uh, during each trip they were here, there were other people with that same problem. And I think that the city, city council should pass legislation requiring the city to formally apologize in the paper to those people who were wrongly accused of being uh, quote unquote deadbeats. Uh, they did say that uh, the city treasurer was, was very helpful and uh, even the last day when they finally got the, the paperwork saying that they were in the clear and um, came out with some paperwork came out outside after. So um, that was nice to hear that at least they were at some point treated, treated well. But I don't think you should have to make three trips. I don't think your name should be on there at all. And I don't think it should be published in the paper. Um, there was no record that they had been sent anything. I believe the paper said last November the notices went out never received and I would like to know for two reasons one I believe those people who are honest and have been paying properly are due a a public as public as the deadbeat comments uh, apology in the paper from the city and also I would like to know how many of those were just improperly posted as well so um, and then the other thing was a private sale that sell through last year. It was just one week prior that I had asked that, uh, that you put a termination date for completing the sale and beginning to pay property taxes. And uh, Mrs. Evans, I believe, asked Attorney Hughes, and there was some question about whether that was already incorporated in the Pittsburgh plan, um, but nothing Nothing was even said about it last week. And I just find it appalling. Again, another place. I was here or at the same podium earlier this year, and I told you of several properties that I believe I didn't go back and check, but properties that were so-called purchased, and the deeds were never filed, so you never got the sale price. Uh, you never got fee uh, taxes. And I believe it amounted to, just in the, this one instance that, that I checked, um, about $80,000. Now, it's not a lot of money, but it's still, it's still revenue to the city, and I don't know why you went and passed that without, and I would like to know, is that because the Pittsburgh plan under which this was approved does have a termination date, and it goes back on the market? I, I spoke to one of the, it was one of the instances that you referenced where a person was interested in buying an adjoining lot, filed the paperwork with the city, council passed it, and at that point they were never notified that they were awarded, you know, that everything processed and they had to come down to the city to, to submit payment. And in that instance it was the administration's mistake that the notice was never sent out when somehow it was realized that it did go through. They they went down to, to, to make the payment, and it was exp it was too late. Um, that's what they were told when when they went into. So into what the is office. that deadline then? I'm not sure. We could look into it. I I would like to know what that what that deadline is. 
Uh, with respect to 7B tonight, I, um, I do hope there are some new recipients, and I will probably be back to the podium later after I hear Mr. Rogan give his uh, changes that you all have agreed on. I, I did read them at the beginning of the meeting. Um, the one new program that applied was the Northeast Suicide Prevention, and um, the administration had them funded at $9,000. And in the amendment, they will be increased to, to the maximum that they applied for, which was uh, eleven thousand dollars. And there were no other changes made. That no, no, there were other changes, but as far as new applicants, um, that was the only new applicant. I could read off the others if you'd like as well. Um, uh, yeah, maybe you do it again in in motions, and then I'll come sure. back if I yeah, because I just think again, as I stated at the public hearing, I think there are too many people that are relying on on it and. Uh, if I may, just Mr. Joyce, will yes. you have a date on the, the audits for us tonight? I will discuss the audit uh, a little bit more in detail as and far as what's lacking still. And then uh, could, could you check to find out when Republic will be adding the days of operation to the parking meters? It's been several weeks and nothing has been done yet that I can see. Thank you. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Mrs. Craig? 5A motions. Mr. McGough, uh, do you have any uh, comments or motions? Uh, not at this time. I'll save them for uh, legislation. Okay. Uh, Councilman Rogan, do you have any uh, comments or motions tonight? Thank you. Just a few brief comments regarding the CDBG allocations and one citizen's request. Um, I, I will read off the changes once again. Um, the, the changes that were made outside of public service were CDB, CDBG administration was reduced um, to 17.5% of the total funding <coughs> passed. The administration has always sent it down at 20 um, it's been passed at 18 in the past, but went a little further this year, which would be a savings of $60,000. Um, $45,000 was added to the Pine Brook neighborhood pool, which, was, um, which wasn't funded when it was initially sent down. $15,000 was also added to the EOTC sidewalks and lighting, um, which wasn't funded also when it came down. Um, in the public service monies, which and just to explain to the public, only a certain portion of the funds that we receive from the federal government can be used for what's classified as public service. Um, so any changes made with in public service, if you're adding to one, you have to take away from another that's in, um, in the public service. So the three changes there were the UNC Project Summer Hope Camp was reduced from 39,000 to 27,000. The Northeast Suicide Prevention was increased from 9,000 to 11,000. And Dress for Success was initially, it wasn't funded when it was sent to City Council, and it'll be funded for $10,000. Um, some of the highlights um, in the total plan, items that haven't been changed, but are ones that um, people commonly ask about, um, are we have uh, $200,000 will be funded for the demolition and disposal of blighted properties throughout the city of Scranton. And this, this money goes through LIPS. Um, Lackawanna Neighbors will be funded for the acquisition and lead abatement and rehabilitation of six properties in Scranton for homes that are experiencing blight. That's funded at $125,000. Um, City of Scranton DPW paving and curve cuts, which is the most popular of all of the programs um, with the, the residents of Scranton is $418,500 um, for paving in low to moderate income areas. And the one other big item was the funding of the neighborhood police patrols, which will be funded in the amount of $152,000. And that money comes also comes out of the public service portion of the uh, CDBG allocations. So hopefully next year we will be able to fund at least the same, hopefully even more police officers, um, because there, there's nothing better than a neighborhood police officer on the streets. So there are some of the highlights um, for the, the projects that we get the most questions about. Um, and finally, I do have one citizen's request. 
Um, a resident contacted me today from the uh, Jackson Street, Cabrini Street area of West Scranton, and, and there's a bus stop right on that corner. And they reported to me that between 2 and 3 p.m., mostly around 2.30, right when school gets out, that there are numerous cars running red lights in that area. Uh, Mrs. Craig, if it's okay with my colleagues, could we please send a letter to Chief Graziano requesting that a, um, if a patrol car is available to do um, traffic monitoring in that area? Um, again, it's the corner of Jackson Street and Cabrini. And that area is, is a very busy area. And for those that aren't familiar with it, is, it's a little strange because you have many streets all converging in one area there. You have a lot of traffic coming up from town. They'll take a shortcut instead of um, going all the way up Lackawanna. You have folks going down into town as a shortcut and just the, the regular neighborhood traffic. And this location is a bus stop. So I, around those times there are kids getting out of the bus and there's parents picking up their kids and, and with all the traffic, um, it seems to be a dangerous situation. Um, and I guess I'll comment on one other item now, the, um, the towing ordinance. I'm glad that this is going to be passed. Um, and again, th this agreement, what it does is it fills the hole in the, that was put in the budget with the idea of the city lot that never materialized. Um, I think it's a good thing that we didn't have a city lot because I think it would have been more of a headache and, and it would have been more costly than it would have brought in. So what it does is it locks in for 10 years the towing contract um, for the city and at Throughout those 10 years, um, initially the $300,000 will be um, come into the city to fill that budget hole for this year, and the city will receive a portion of the um, towing and storage fees that per, I believe it was Mr. Loscombe's amendment last week, will only be used for police um, vehicles in the city. And um, it's something I'm very happy to support. I spoke to most of the towing companies. They all like it. Um, they're all, they were all agreeable to it, so it, it works. It's a good compromise that was reached between business and the city, and that's what we have to look to do in the future. Um, work with the business community, whether it be you know, a small sector or a large sector, um, to, to work together. And I wish this agreement was reached last year instead of going through the, the putting in the towing yard and, and coming back with this, but I am happy that that is resolved, and that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rogan. <clears throat> uh, tonight, I'll begin by addressing uh, the audit. Uh, we received some correspondence from Rossi and Rossi, our independent auditors. And as of October 24th, uh, we have uh, one major open item. And um, that's pretty much the audited financial statements of the parking authority. Thus far, uh, Rossi and Rossi has received a revised draft of uh, their, their report. However, the audit can't be completed until such a report has been finalized and issued. After the receipt of this, and assuming that the information does not require any further follow-up, Rossi and Rossi will complete the financial statements and present a draft of the full financial statements for the city's review and completion of the management and management discussion and analysis section of the audit report. And following this, uh, basically, the final statements cannot be issued without a final Scranton Parking Authority audit report, as I said. The city's required man or the management and discussion analysis of the financial statement and the city's uh, representation letter followed by an exit conference. I was told that um, all of these matters were looking to or were on target to be completed by the end of October, but judging by uh, today's date, uh, being October 24th, and how um, we certainly do not have um, many of our ducks in a row, it looks like um, we're not going to hit the end of October. So I will follow up with Ms. McAndrew, our business administrator, and uh, inquire uh, where we are and 
when we're looking to uh, have things finalized. Also, as stated in the Scranton Times, uh, the city has received a, um, a, a proposal by Amalgamated Bank for our tax anticipation note of up to $16 million. As you know, there are some conditions with that, such as um, uh, their approval and Pell's sign off on the 2014 budget, as well as having funding in place for uh, the police and fire arbitration award. And speaking of the police and fire arbitration award, I was speaking to uh, Mike Judge from CaseCon. Uh, I, I spoke to him today and I spoke to him a, uh, a few days ago as well, uh, just for some updates on where we are as far as progress. Uh, our interested lender that we're looking at uh, basically wants to review everything that they can about the city as far as uh, our cash flow reports, the recovery plan, uh, pension information, etc. And that's where they are right now. So once they review that information, they will make a determination whether or not they are interested in moving forward or not interested at all. So that's pretty much where we are on that. Um, Mr. Judge is making progress. The information is being provided to the potential lender and the lender is current re currently reviewing that information. Also in the picture, as you know, is uh, Janie Montgomery Scott. However, they're waiting on the 2014 budget. They're waiting on the outcome of that and also uh, to see what Pell's analysis of that will be. And finally tonight, I'd just like to talk a little bit about uh, the future of the city. And uh, one thing that really needs attention in the upcoming years are pension costs and just overall legacy costs such as uh, retiree health benefits, etc. Just to give you an idea of where the city is, in 2014, the city will be required to make a contribution of 9,735,912 in regard to um, the uh, MMO. In 2015, this is scheduled to go up to a slightly over $11 million. In 2016, this is still scheduled to stay at around $11 million. In 2017, however, this is scheduled to jump up to $15 million again based on some information uh, uh, from the actuarial reports. So um, it could be pretty well said that legacy costs and our underfunded pension system will be a primary concern of the future. And that is an issue that um, the uh, future administration and uh, future councils will need to address. As you know, uh, minimum municipal obligations um, when I first took office were rather low. However, uh, we're starting to see the rise in that right now. Uh, this year, the city uh, is pretty much on the hook for, well, six million two ninety eight six fifty six. As I said before, that increases in 2014 and will continue a steady increase uh, up until 2018. And then after that, uh, the, well, right now there's no data past 2018. But it's a major problem and it's definitely something that needs serious attention. And that's all I have for tonight. If I could comment, Mr. Chairman.
Yes. Before Rossi and company can complete the audit, they have to have the audit from the Scranton Parking Authority. I believe you said that. Correct. I discussed that today with uh, Sean Grassi because one of the documents that Mr. Um, Judge needs to do any financing is at least a draft of the city audit. One of the problems is that the audit, the draft audit that Mr. Grassi received from the SPA auditors does not have any of the assets of the garages listed. Only the liabilities uh, are listed. Uh, I went over that with Mr. Grassi. We reviewed the order appointing um, Mr. Washoe as the receiver or trustee uh, to manage the garages. I told him that, in my opinion, that the audit was as drafted for the SPA was not correct because the garages are not, were never transferred or not owned pursuant to the court order by the trustee on behalf of the bondholders. That they are still the property, they're still owned by the Scranton Parking Authority. The only thing that Mr. Washoe has is the ability pursuant to the court order to operate and manage the garages. <clears throat> and what he has to do is report to the court uh, what the gross revenues are, what the expenses are, what the net revenues are on a monthly basis, um, turn that money over to the trustee for the, bond, for the bondholders, and then the city of Scranton, pursuant to its guarantee, must uh, make up the uh, balance in order to make the bond payments. So <clears throat> that's what's being investigated now. I told him I was available to discuss that with you know, the SPA auditors. Uh, I did call uh, Mr. Washoe, left a message for him, and I haven't heard back from him for him to get in touch uh, with Sean Rossi. Uh, I mean with <laughs> Sean Grassi up at Rossi and Company uh, to get this straightened out. Uh, there's absolutely no deeds conveying the property from the Scranton Parking Authority to Mr. Washoe as the receiver. Uh, it's still owned by the Parking Authority and they should be set forth on the balance sheet of the parking authority as they are the owner of those buildings. Uh, along with the debt, uh, with the liabilities, of course, would be the outstanding bond issues. Hopefully that will be addressed. We can get this resolved tomorrow. Thank you, Attorney Hughes. Um, thank you for uh, providing that information. And actually, um, I did have one quick comment, and uh, I'll end on a bright note tonight. Uh, I, I did happen to speak to the mayor yesterday for uh, a brief period of time, and I was informed by him that since um, the delinquent uh, ref or folks owing delinquent refuse fees were uh, published in the paper, the city has uh, collected an additional $200,000. And that's all. 5B, transferring funds from fund 04, City of Scranton Parks and Recreation account, which funds and account are no longer needed for the conduct of city business, and abolishing and closing said account, and transferring the funds remaining in said account to the PNC general funding checking account listed below. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. I'll second it. <laughs> On the question. Yes, this is just the transfer of uh, it's $2,263.48 from Department of Parks and Recreation to the general fund. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety, file of council number 50, 2013, as amended. Repealing file of council number 37 of 2011, as amended, entitled, establishing the list of authorized towing companies for the city of Scranton and establishing the rules, qualifications, and standards to be followed by all said towing companies 
establishing fines and penalties for towing and fees related to this ordinance by establishing the list of authorized towing companies for the city of Scranton, establishing the rules, qualifications, and standards to be followed by all said towing companies, establishing fines and penalties for towing and fees related to this ordinance, and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to enter into a 10-year contract for towing and related services in the city of Scranton in exchange for a one-time payment of $300,000 to be credited to line item 01331-33165, police towing slash storage fees in accordance with file of council 50, 2013 as amended. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety? As temporary chair for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question, Roll call, please. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. I would like to make a motion to take file of council number 47, 2013, item 7B, from the table. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. Um, before we read item 7B, I would like to take this opportunity to open up the floor for any public comment. Mrs. Craig? 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development, file of Council number 47, 2013, previously tabled authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to take all necessary actions to implement the consolidated submission for community planning and development programs to be funded under the community development block grant CDBG program, home investment partnership home program, and emergency solutions grants ESG program for the period beginning January 1st, 2014. I make a motion to amend item 7B as per the following. CDBG administration, $420,000. EOTC sidewalks and lighting, $15,000. Pinebrook neighborhood pool, $45,000. UNC project summer hope camp, $27,000. Northeast suicide prevention, $11,000. And dress for success, $10,000. Second. We have, oh, sorry, we, we have a motion on the floor. Obviously, we have a second. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Um, actually, I should have opened up uh, public comment after the um, motion was made to amend. However, um, is there anyone who would like to address council regarding the amendment to item 7B? Okay. <clears throat> what is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on C Community Development of as, item 7B is amended? As chairperson of the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7B as amended. Second. On the question. Yes, uh, a couple of things. Uh, first, the, it should be noted that the reduction in administrative costs um, for this program. Um, administrative costs do not, are not just salaries. A lot of people believe that that just covers the salaries of people in OECD. Administrative costs are the cost of operating the entire OECD program. Um, everything from salaries to staples um, and in between. Um, Reducing it does have an effect on uh, the ability of OECD to operate, obviously, if their funding, uh, if that administrative funding is cut. Um, if what happens is, if the administrative costs of operating OECD 
exceed what's this amount, it becomes the responsibility of the city to pay those additional costs. So while there are savings up front, there is a potential that, um, or I shouldn't say savings up front, while we can redirect some of that money up front, um, there is the potential that through the course of 2014, if the administrative costs do exceed that amount, um, the city will be responsible and it would be cost, uh, a cost to the city, something that would come out of the general fund. Um, second thing that I did want to mention, uh, and uh, I had spoken to Mr. Rogan earlier in the day about these, uh, but I, I failed to ask about the um, any changes to the home and ESG programs. I know that I had said in the past that uh, I was going to recommend some changes, um, and I did, and, but we don't have any amendments. And I was just wondering if you'd care to comment if there was a reason. Well, when we spoke this morning, I thought we weren't going to make any changes to the Homer ESG. Okay. I <laughs> and I do remember we spoke on the floor about um, directing money from um, from demolition and from some of the rehab in the city to other rehab, which is something I think we all support it, but then nothing ever, there, there wasn't any further discussion, and if that's something I missed, I, I certainly apologize. Uh, and uh, I would say that it, in speaking with Mrs. Abley, uh, some of the changes that I had recommended were things that um, she did say, not that they weren't possible, but that um, they wouldn't have the effect that I thought they would. Um, one of the things that came up was that any home rehabilitation, they can't do it, they can't do it piecemeal. In other words, you can't yeah. go in and just do, put a roof on somebody's house, that once they get funding, the entire house must be brought to code. And, and so a, the pro program that I had envisioned would probably be illegal under, or not possible under um, current sta HUD standards. Uh, so, um, yeah, the, the, as I said, the recommended changes probably wouldn't have the effect that, um, that I had envisioned, and, um, and that's fine. And uh, just a couple, and I'm glad you brought these up, because I had a couple more comments regarding a few outstanding issues and something that was brought up a couple weeks ago. Um, I believe it was Mrs. Evans brought up a question regarding funding and some of the grants that went to, C to OECD administration. And from speaking to Ms. Abley, it was explained that any time it's allowable to bill a specific grant for the administration, it's done that way because that's less funding that will be used out of our CDBG allocation. And that's generally, it's done on an hourly basis and it varies um, depending on how much work is, is put in. Um, and next, regarding the, the changes, Mr. McGough pretty much summed it up correctly um, regarding the, the rehab of homes that it, it has to be, things have to be brought up to a certain standard. And I do know that NeighborWorks and EPA had, had some other programs that were doing outside of the HUD, and we and we received a, a flyer, and I am I do want to follow up with um, Jesse Ergot, the president of the group, and they were working on getting volunteers to go through different sections of the community um, to do minor repairs, things like you know if there's a fence on that picket fence on the house that has lead paint, you know removal of that and, and giving it a coat of paint and smaller things like that, but they they add up um, in a neighborhood, and I'm hopeful that. Little things like that could, could add up with many of the bigger programs where we're, we're rehabbing homes and a lot of the money in the rehab is in asbestos and blight removal or asbestos and lead removal because it is so expensive. Thank you. Um, in light of uh, what was said before, I, I know uh, Mr. McGough, you said you had some ideas for home and ESG and that um, they, they weren't included. Um, would you like to make a motion to include some of your suggestions? Um, in light of, uh, again, in light of what I, Mrs. Abley and I had spoke about, I, I, I'm satisfied with, uh, with it as, as it currently exists. Okay, just 
making sure. Um, I will offer my comment. I'm very pleased to see some projects uh, receiving some extra funding or funding at all. Uh, I'm very glad to see uh, the Pine Brook neighborhood pool will receive $45,000. I know this is something that uh, Ms. Chalipko from the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association has uh, been speaking about for a very long time and it would be very nice to see uh, this pool on its way to reopening and um, it, it, it would just it would just be something great to see that area start to revive because I know it's an area of Scranton that has um, been going downhill over the years and it's great to see that um, some money will be invested in the area and also that we have a great neighborhood association over there that does take pride in the area and that's working to improve things also um, uh, I'm also glad to see uh, Dress for Success being funded. I think that's an important program. And I'm very pleased to see that um, we will be uh, allocating funding for um, beat officers, uh, it, uh, three beat officers. I know that we received a, um, a letter from the North Scranton Neighborhood Association Watch uh, encouraging us to uh, approve five beat officers. However, with the um, requirement, um, basically, uh, you're only allowed, in layman's terms, you're only allowed to allocate so much funding uh, for a public service event. And uh, this is a public service allocation. So uh, we cannot just simply allocate uh, money to fund the full complement of officers that was requested of the department at will. Um, however, I do believe that by uh, funding three officers, we are uh, doing our best to make sure that we're working to keep our streets safe, as well as funding um, other per public service activities. And that's all. And you brought up a good point. I don't want to belabor it too much, but you spoke about Pinebrook. And one of the issues we dealt with, this is going back a few months, was um, the issue of the parking lot on Kapaus and Marion Street. And I know that I believe it passed 4 1 to, to approve to accept it. And that project mm -hmm. for the parking lot um, rehab is also included in here. And I, the other night, I did have a chance to drive by the privately developed portion of, mm -hmm. of that block renovation that um, the Falsettes have been doing. I talked to Chris the other day, and they're doing an amazing job. Um, it's, it's a great project. I'm glad to see that neighborhood, that block really looks great. And um, that neighborhood is kind of in between Pinebrook and Green, or just right on that borderline there. But it, it looks great, and, and I think this will, will really be the icing on the cake, this, this last part of the project. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Is there anyone else on? Well, uh, we all spoke. But is there anyone else that has any additional comments to add? Okay. Uh, what is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7D as amended. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Mr. Joyce. Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development, resolution number 42, 2013, ratifying and approving of the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton on behalf of Community Life Support Incorporated, CLS, to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, acting through the Commonwealth Financing Authority for a local share account grant pursuant to the Pennsylvania Racehorse Development and Gaming Act in the amount of $325,474 for the project to be known as Neonatal Transportation Project located in Scranton, Pennsylvania, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept the grant if successful and execute and enter into a local share account grant contract and commitment letter with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to accept and utilize the grant in the amount of 
$474 awarded by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for such project. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. S on the question. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 I hereby declare item C or 7C uh, legally and lawfully adopted. 7D. For consideration by the Committee on Community Development, Resolution Number 43, 2013, ratifying and approving of the execution and submission of the grant application by the City of Scranton on behalf of the Scranton Sewer Authority to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania acting through the Commonwealth Financing Authority for a local share account grant pursuant to the Pennsylvania Racehorse Development and Gaming Act in the amount of $415,695 for the project to be known as Street Sweeper Project, located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. This resolution shall also authorize the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept the grant if approved and execute and enter into a local share account grant contract and commitment letter with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to accept and utilize the grant awarded by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for such project. What is the recommendation of the Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development? As Chairperson for the Committee on Community Development, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.